Michelle Loud about T.D. Jake's daughter taking her child. And so I kind of briefly looked at it, but I was like, listen, the Jakes got so much going on that I don't even want no parts of none of that stuff. I mean, they just got too much going on right now. So at that time, I looked at it. I kind of heard some of it. I, I sympathized with it. I had compassion towards it. But I was like, wait a minute. I was like, I don't have time to cover that right now. And then somebody got right in my messenger and sent me a video and was like, Trigger Preacher, can you please pray for this woman? Can you please please look at this? And when I tell y'all, when I got to go looking at it and I went and looked to see who, who the woman was and I started looking at the case, y'all know I am justice all day. Trigger Preacher is here because of justice. You know, they used to say no justice, no peace. That's the, listen, I believe no justice, no peace. Let me tell you something. A part of me is about that justice part. God will bring the peace that it needs, but I truly believe in the justice. And the Bible says, God says, I am a just God. And so when I got this situation in front of me, it blew my mind. But listen, y'all, it is the story that is going around about Cora Jakes and Cora Jakes end up taking this girl's baby. Now, it was more details to that. I had to listen to over a two hour interview to get the details that I'm about to try to sum up to y'all. Listen, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, because this is going on not just in the body of Christ, but this is going on with so-called believers. It's a lot of mental illnesses that's going on. It's a lot of things that is going on behind closed doors that we're not addressing this thing. It's a lot of things that's going on that we can take from this situation and we can learn the lessons that God would have us to learn from this particular situation. Now, listen, y'all, this woman. And I know y'all can contest it is. This woman was going through, this woman had three kids. I'm going to try to sum it up for you. This woman had three kids. And I'm going to tell you why I can relate to her story because this was me. And this was a lot of us as women. This woman had three kids. She had been knowing at the time, she had been knowing Cora Jakes for probably over 14 years. She has been in church with her. She has been at her house. She has lived with her in her earlier years. She had developed a friendship with Cora Jakes, y'all. Listen at this. Y'all better listen to what I'm about to say to y'all. This woman had developed a relationship with Cora Jakes as they were growing up as kids. She was in the church. She was a part of their dance team. She was a part of their drama team. She was a part of their rec department. She was a part of some youth ministry things they had going on. She was all affiliated with the, with the Jakes, okay? Now, I love T.D. Jakes, and one thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to blame the behavior of his child on him. I will not do that because I, I tell anybody, I said, we birth these kids, but we don't create them. Do you hear me? We birth these kids. But we do not create these kids, okay? That God is the creation. He knows how it's coming through. At the end of the day, there are some things that be sick and twisted in our children, in their mind, from the demons and devils and their own traumas that sometimes parents don't have nothing to do with. Parents don't have nothing to actually do with. Everybody got their own battle to fight, and everybody got their own set of demons that's going to attack their life and got their own set of journey. And we learned that from the story of Joseph. We learned it from the story of Joseph after being one of the last brothers. And he didn't have, he didn't know anything about what they were trying to plot and plan to do. But God says what the devil meant for Joseph's bad, that God was turning it around for good. And so sometimes you can go through something and you look like, wait a minute, I didn't have nothing to do to cause these things to come upon me. But why did God choose me? And a lot of times if God chose you, he chose you because the Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. If God chose you, you better believe that the end result is going to be in your favor because God don't choose you for no mess. The end result was in Jesus' favor. The end result was in Joseph's favor. When God chooses you, the end result always works out in your favor. And you got to understand that everything that happened to you is not something that you brought to you. But if God chose you, you got to understand that it's going to work together for your good. And if you got to know this because if you know that you didn't do this, you know you were set up. You know you was lied on. You know you was manipulated. You know you was tricked out of some stuff. Let me tell you something. You got to know that the end result is going to work in your favor. I want you to know that tonight. That you got to know. Thank you, precious. Thank you, precious, for the scripture. The end result is going to work out in your favor. Even though you got to go through the rough process. Even though you got to go through crying nights. Even though you got to go through frustration. Even though you got to go through being lied on. Even though you got to go through being ridiculed. Even though you got to go through being talked about. Being hated on. Being spit on. Being treated. you like, wait a minute. And you know the truth. The hardest thing is to know the truth about a situation. But you're being crucified 
where you didn't even do what they said you do. I know that's the hardest, but you know what? The Bible gave us a good example of Jesus. It says, you know what? He never said a mumbling word. He never said a mumbling word when he knew that he was getting ready to die for some folks. That, 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 that was wrong. That was absolutely wrong. And he was getting ready to cover their stuff. That's got to be the most a hurtful thing, that, any emotional thing that you can go through. But I want you all to understand that it's working together for your good. It's working together for your good. And so let me say this. So as I'm listening to the girl interview, okay, she, she, she showed that she had a relationship with Cora. She had a relationship with Cora, right? So she turns around, and then in 2014, right, she gets with, with Cora, and, and it's a lot of in-between to that. It's a lot of in-between. They had a mutual friend. The mutual friend was telling Cora what the girl was going through and stuff like that. So the girl ended up meeting up with Cora, all right? She'd been knowing her at this time for about over 10 years, 14 years. She was knowing Cora. This girl came to meet Cora and realized that she was going through, she was pregnant. So she was pregnant with her fourth child, y'all. I want y'all to hear me. This girl had three kids. I'm going to try to slow down, help y'all understand this. This girl had three kids. She was pregnant with her fourth child. And she was just leaving a toxic relationship, all right? So she had she was just leaving a toxic relationship with the baby with the baby father. So she didn't really have nowhere to stay. So she ended up staying with her brother. She ended up staying with her mother, right? And so like anybody, she started going through all kind of depression. She had never got prenatal care for this fourth child. She never got prenatal care for this fourth child. But remember, she had three. She had three. She was in a relationship toxic now she meets Cora she meets up with Cora somebody she's been knowing for over 14 years so here she's telling Cora everything she's going through now how many of us have went through some situations and we confided in somebody in that moment we didn't stay in that moment I could contest to that but we was in that moment feeling like life was over feeling like we was gonna lose everything feeling depressed feeling suicidal it's just a moment it's just a moment have you ever had somebody to take advantage of your moment of your moment and deem you to be horrible because you had a moment. Y'all got to follow this story because this is just where it went to. So let me tell you something. So she confided in Cora. She was pregnant with her fourth child, not knowing what to do, not knowing what to do. And when you go looking at her whole story, Cora was plotting on this girl's child. Cora was in the process of trying to have babies when she found out she could not have babies. She was trying to find other ways to get other people to carry her child because Cora Jakes cannot have kids. She cannot have kids. So y'all can go check all that information out. I've already been there. I checked it out. She could not have kids. And so because she could not have kids, this girl was on a hit out on this girl's baby. And so here's the girl thinking that this is her friend. Thinking it's somebody she grew up with, thinking that I'm going to confide in her because she went to church. You know, I went to church with her. She can't have kids. She played like she was going to be this, this girl's baby godmother, auntie. All right, y'all? Y'all got to listen to this girl's story. And so when the girl got ready to have her baby, I'm speeding it up, cutting through all the other stuff. When the girl got ready to have her baby, Cora, she called Cora because the baby father didn't want to come. The girl was staying at home with her mother who wasn't that well. And the mother was actually taking care of her other three kids. So she called Cora to be that friend, to come to that hospital when she had that baby. Cora came there and was holding that baby and was there the whole time this girl had that baby with an agenda with an agenda, with an agenda to try to find a way to take this girl's baby. Listen, y'all, I don't know if y'all ever saw that movie, The Hand That Rocked the Cradle, but somebody wrote that. Somebody wrote that because it's real. And this is what I want to say to you. You got to be careful of those people who are sitting around you acting like they're your sister, acting like they're your brother, acting like they're your cousin, your friend, your auntie, your homegirl, but they sitting down and they taking notes and they waiting for you to fail. They watching everything you do, and they waiting for you to fail. They sitting up there taking notes. They waiting on your downfall. They waiting on your downfall. I mean, I just covered a story where a girl was taking pictures of somebody because she was waiting for an opportunity, thinking, I'm going to have to expose that. If you are in a relationship, and you got to do stuff like that, and you got to be talking about, I'm gotta, I'm gonna, let me find all this information and document and all this because one day I may have to expose them or them, you need to get out of that. You need to get out because your motive is wrong. Your intention is wrong. If you are with somebody or you are in a relationship or you are at a church or you are somewhere and you are secretly, secretly, you're writing it down. Secretly, you're like, mm-hmm, but you got somebody think that you're being 100. you like, mm-hmm, uh, no. If you got to do it, just go. Just get up out of it. Don't wait for a moment. Take what you already know and get up out of there. You're either going to confront it 
or you're not going to deal with it at all. And in this particular girl's story, that's exactly what happened to her. Cora was sitting right there taking notes on this girl. This girl was experiencing postpartum depression. Now, let me ask y'all something. How many of y'all experienced postpartum depression? I know I didn't go through it, through that magnitude, but having six kids, baby, you got some depression going on. You got some issues going on when you got more than one child. You got some issues going on. Here, this girl has some postpartum issues going on. She's confiding in her friend. Her friend steps in and says, I'm going to be the godmother. I'm going to be the baby's auntie, and that baby ain't going to want for nothing. Now, how are you going to tell this girl that her that baby ain't going to want for nothing? She got three more kids. You should have known right then and there that her motive was wrong. How, I got four kids, and you're going to tell me the last one ain't going to want for nothing. That the one that you want, the newborn baby that you want, ain't going to want for nothing. So let me tell you this. So the girl left the hospital. The girl went home taking care of her kids, but Cora kept in contact with this girl and would come and get her baby because she was godmama. And of course, if you got three kids and you're staying with your mother and you know that the godmother can give your baby a better life and be able to help your baby, you're not going to deprive that child of that. And that's what that girl ended up doing. So the girl ended up letting Cora take her baby, take her baby to and fro, to and fro at certain times. You're right with pure motives, unintentional, pure, just motives was all bad. So the girl had pure motives. She was letting Cora take her child back and forth, being the godmother, because the father didn't want nothing to do with the baby. She needed the help. And Cora played on that girl emotions. And so when you keep following the story, y'all, the story got so deep and so defiled. And, I mean, it, it, it was it's horrible. And so after two years of going back and forth, Cora told the girl this. Cora told the girl. She says, you, we need to stop making the baby come back and forth because he don't have a stable home. He need to stay more with me. The girl said, you need, she, your baby need to stay with me until you kind of get some things together. You can come up here, but your baby need to stay with me. And I'm going to jump right up to the point where Cora had the girl stand with her. So the girl moved in with Cora, right? She moved in about within about two years after having his son. Do you know the girl moved in with Cora? And they set, and Cora set the girl up to signing some papers, told the girl that she needed her to sign a notarized um, document for the baby to fly with her. The girl signed the paper not thinking that Cora was having her sign a paper to sign over her rights to her child that she would now become the legal guardian. This has got to be insane. The girl signed the document without knowing what she was doing, thinking it was about the, the, the little boy flying with Cora or whatever, and end up Cora was trying to take her baby. The following year, Cora took this girl's baby. Cora took this girl baby, I think somewhere around 2017, she fought in the courts with the girl baby and the judge, the judge, the judge that was in the situation happened to be a judge that was actually going to the Potter house that was actually on the board and they all worked together to take this girl's baby. Now, y'all go hear the stories. There's plenty of videos out here when Cora is talking about she couldn't have babies. She was doing that vitro stuff, whatever you call that stuff, trying to have babies other ways. Listen, I don't, listen, this is supposed to be her friend. Y'all got to understand who y'all calling friends. Y'all got to understand who y'all calling sisters and homegirls. I mean, you can't even barely trust your family nowadays. I'm going to be real honest with you. You can hardly trust your cousins and your family around you. Let's know somebody on the outside. You really got to ask God for the spirit of discernment in these last and evil days. I'm telling you, because people be having some straight up hidden agendas. They be having some straight up hidden motives, and their motives are not pure. Their motives is to be very destructive in your life, y'all. I'm telling you. You, you from your pastor check your pastor out check your first lady out check the ministers don't be just letting people speak into your life don't be letting people talk about we need to we need to do some deliverance over you let, let me see you do deliverance over yourself first let me see you get yourself free before you go patting on my head before you go punching on me the girl said that Cora called this prophetess out here and y'all can hear the name and the prophetess came out there and laid the girl on the floor and started prophesying like she was doing an exorcism on her and she was getting her delivered but at the same time telling this girl you know do you think that you had your baby for you or do you think that that God may have had you to have that baby for Cora and her husband now what retarded person gonna tell you do you think God had you to have your baby for you come on do you, just because you got people who think they got a better living environment. I 
I don't care if a person got to live in a shelter with their child. It's their child. Just because you think you got a mansion, just because you think you got pearls, and you got that don't, that's not your child. You got a mansion, you got all this stuff, but you still can't have no kid. It's a reason why God said you cannot have a kid. And instead of respecting what God said, because maybe God knew something that you did not know, you decided that you was going to go ahead and forfeit what God said. You're going to take somebody else's child. How dare we people come on? Like, listen, listen, if you've been friends with a girl for 16 years, y'all better help me understand this. Number one, if you've been friends with a girl for 16 years, I don't care if my girl was on crack cocaine. I don't care if she was half crazy as a Betsy Buck. Let me tell you something. If that's my friend and I got to take her child for a minute, Oh, my plan is to get that child back, baby. My plan is to make sure to help you get on your feet. Or when you get on your feet, baby, hey, you can come and see your child. Listen, even if you're neglecting your child, my whole plan and objective is, guess what? If you want your child, is to make sure that I help lead you to the right person so that you can get the healing that you need, that you can get the rehabilitation that you need. But the whole goal is that I'm not going to disconnect you from your child. How do you go to court? And you fight for a woman's child who's telling you, I want the child. I want my child. I got three kids. And then you have the audacity to take the child who's been with those three kids for at least two years. You have the audacity to pull that boy away from his other three siblings and his mother because you think you can give this child a better life. Are you serious? There's plenty of kids you could have went and adopted or whatever you did. But the girl set the girl up and took this girl child jaw, took the child, and they're going to go to fight. You're going to go fight in the court. And then the girl didn't even see her child for one whole year. One whole year, the girl did not see her child. The girl said it was a TikTok video that Cora had done, and she saw her child in his voice for the first time, and she was crying. That's the first time. Can y'all imagine somebody taking your child from you when your child is two or three years old? And then take you totally away from your child. Where you can't see your child, hear your child, and put your child in a home with you and your husband and another adopted child. That nobody knows where the mother or the parents is of that adopted child. And then you cut the girl off. The girl was never proven to be on crack. They actually used some, some that she smoked weed. She smoked weed against her. I know so many people smoke weed. Listen. And then, to, and then the girl says, Cora Jake smoked weed. She said, I smoked the most weed when I was with Cora. So let me tell you something. We got people on these platforms that's preaching, that's screaming, that's doing a whole lot of stuff. And because they're not doing it the way Trigger Preacher doing it, you think that the glamorous stuff you see, that they all of this and they all of that, and they behind the scenes smoking more weed, doing more dirt, setting people up. And y'all look at that stuff. And y'all think that that stuff is God. That stuff is nowhere near God. Let me tell you something. If you read your scripture, Saul still was going around thinking that he was anointing and God had pushed, took the anointing off of Saul. He had took the mantle away from Saul, but he was still walking around. Everybody still was thinking that Saul had it going on and God had already snatched his anointing from him. Do y'all know there's so many people that you're looking at? That you're looking at that God had already snatched back his anointing off of them. It wasn't that they wasn't once anointed. It wasn't once they, 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 they didn't have the call, but they rejected to continue in that thing. And the Bible says, even Paul says, he says that after I get done preaching this to you, I got to make sure I'm not disqualified. Y'all don't get that in the scripture. The scripture, he says, listen, after I get done preaching this word to you, he says, I got to beat my own body. I got to beat my own body and make it subjected to the word of God. So I too don't find myself disqualified. Wait a minute, Paul. How you wrote the majority of the whole New Testament? You got beheaded. You went to prison. You preached around. You planted the churches as an apostle. You were speaking to leaders, raising up leaders, teaching leaders. You were doing a whole lot and you too could be disqualified? Really? Really? So the one who really, I mean, you almost lost your, lost your life for the gospel? And you can still be disqualified. And these folks ain't losing nothing. They ain't even losing weight 
Let's be quiet. They ain't even losing weight. They ain't losing nothing. And y'all think that they ain't disqualified themselves with this foolishness they doing. Y'all, y'all listening to people who have disqualified a long time ago. And God is raising up a whole new army of folks. God is raising up some folks that ain't going to lie to you, ain't going to sugarcoat it, ain't going to look how you think they should look. Because we get it. We ain't trying to dress it all up and put all the stuff on and act like it. No, we're trying to be like it. We're trying to live like it. We ain't trying to put, the Jesus talked about people are long enough, call them some white wash tombs. He called them some white wash tombs. He said they look good on the outside, but inside they are full of dead men bones. Let me tell you something. A lot of folks you looking at today are some white wash tombs, but are full. Thank you, Tracy, for that. But are full of dead men bones. That mean they rotten. If you got a dead man bones that's all up in you, baby, that mean you are rotten to the core. That mean you have no life up in you. Dead man bones, that's what you're full of? Dead man bones? I don't think nothing from a dead man bone. Thank you for the stars. Thank you for the stars, Denise. Listen, I don't think nothing about a dead man bone is in good operation. That's operating to tell you anything. So the Bible says they're like a tinkling symbol, sounding symbol. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I need y'all to understand something that what was done to this woman is wrong. And because we are still in January and the year is just getting started and we're still exposing stuff, exposing stuff, exposing stuff. That girl took that girl baby and then went in that courtroom and fought against that girl to keep her baby. No, Cora Jake's baby, you are absolutely wrong. And then watch this. The girl been asking for her baby. Asking for her baby. The girl going to court, she's going to court and she's losing. Not having the right attorneys. Because she's fighting in the same city, in the same state where Potter House is and everybody that she's fighting you know what I'm saying? To try to help her, they all are part of part of the house. So she's like in a no winning battle. So she, so she thought, so she thought, but God, I'm telling you, was allowing the right opportune time to come into this girl's life. And the time is now. And the time is now. How you going to fight somebody? The girl ain't no crack. She ain't no meth. She ain't no drugs. She over there raising her other three kids. How she going to be fit to raise three kids, but she ain't fit to raise this one. Make that make sense. Make that make sense. Let me tell y'all something, y'all. I got so many notes up in here. I'm telling you, it don't even make no sense, right? <laughs> I'm talking about the girl been knowing the girl. They all know the girl. You done took the girl, baby. She been fighting you since 2018 to get her doggone baby back from you. And you got the audacity to be taking pictures with this little boy, calling him your son. Your son. Oh, that's some sick, twisted stuff. I could not imagine my friend that I've been kicking it with or been knowing for 14 years. I go to church with. We do stuff. You take my baby, and I ask you for your baby. Thank you for the stars, Tony. Thank you for the 200 stars. Thank you. Listen, listen. he said, activate a stars party. How you activate a stars party? Okay. Um, all right. But how you going? You my friend. You going to take my baby, shut me off from my baby, and then turn around and got my baby calling you mother. You talking about this your son. If that ain't some sick, twisted stuff, if ain't nobody going to say it, trigger preacher going to say it. That is sick. That is twisted. That is a mental breakdown. Let me tell you something. If y'all go read the story, the girl was plotting on this girl child since the baby what even came out of her stomach. Before the baby even came out the girl's stomach, there was a mutual friend. Thank you, Pamela, for the stars. Listen, there was a mutual friend who was telling Cora what the girl Michelle was going through. And Cora was sending messages back to the mutual friend saying, actually, does she want to put the baby up for adoption? Actually, does she want to get rid of the baby? The girl was like, look, I'm having a hard time, but I'm not trying to get rid of my baby. Let me tell you something. They used everything against this girl while she was depressed. How many of y'all got pregnant? I know I did. Got pregnant, and I was like, listen, I, 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 was, uh, I wanted to have an abortion. I didn't think I could do it. I didn't think I could raise these kids. I was like, what am I going to do? There were so many scenarios every time I got, especially when you're young, 20, 20. Oh, I remember my first child, I had friends telling me, oh, I know you ain't going to have that baby. Oh, I know you ain't going to have that baby. I know you're going to get rid of that baby. That's what they were telling me. And listen, I was working with them. I was sitting up there saying the same thing. I was like, listen, I don't think I want to have this baby. And then when I had my second son, his father had passed away. And because his father had passed away, 
I had people, I had a girl who was going to fly down. She was out of state. She was going to fly down out of state to give me the abortion money. I was six months pregnant. I was crying, and I was crying because I was like, he'll never see his daddy. He'll never see his daddy. I was crying. I was stressed out. I mean, it was just a mess. And my girl was like, you can't have that baby. You can't have that baby. And there was a lot of stuff that was connected to his daddy at that time. And I kept, I was contemplating on not having a baby. I, I couldn't have this baby. I couldn't do that. I was so depressed. I was so jacked up. Listen. Don't take a, listen, if you would have took advantage of my vulnerability then, only for me to be here today, I would fight you too. I would fight you too. I would fight you tooth and nail till you give me my baby back. I'm going through a moment. Do not take advantage of people's vulnerable moments. Y'all got to be careful because there are so many people who are waiting. They are waiting for you to drop the ball. They even on your job. They on your job. They wait for you to make one bad mistake, one bad decision. They like, I'm going to apply for that job. I mean, manipulative. That's straight manipulative. That's straight evil. Instead of you praying that somebody keep her job. Instead of you praying that they keep their relationship. Instead of you praying that they that they excel. Instead of you praying that they become better and not bitter. You wait for them to fall. Listen, let me tell you something. I don't even wait for my own enemies to fall. Do you understand me? I pray to God that he let them be at peace. I pray to God that he allowed them to prosper in whatever he has called them to prosper in. Okay. I pray that. All right. And the reason why I pray that because the better that they do, the more they'll leave me alone and they'll be at peace within themselves. I want the best for you because what is it going to hurt me to have the best for you? I'm not around you. I don't see you. I don't feed you. I don't have to deal with you. Why would I want the worst for you? Why? That's evil. And I know it. when I was immature, I know I would say things like, you know what? I'm going to get you back. I'm going to get you back because I was vengeful. I was, ve- listen, I didn't wait on God. Revenge, look, vengeance was not God. Vengeance was mine when I was ignorant. When I wasn't in God, vengeance was mine, said Michelle, not the Lord. So I get it. I was ignorant. I was hurt. I was angry. And let me tell you something. I wasn't the sneaky one. I wasn't the one that wanted to get you and you didn't know that it was me. I wanted you to know that I was going to get you. I wanted you to know that it came from me. I understand that outside of God. But this is why I don't talk to a lot of people that's truly outside of God. I'm talking to folks that know God. But when I got with God, I had to take him up on his word. He says, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He said, you better pray for your enemies. You better pray because if you watch any of these Bible stories, you understand that let me tell you some God will do something to your enemies that will make you feel bad. Oh, my God. Especially if they wicked. God will swallow them jokers up so fast. And you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. Hold on, Lord. Hold on, Lord. Don't do them like that. Don't do them like that. I remember having a situation and his prophet prayed. And he said, oh, he's going to jail by Christmas. I was like, no, he ain't because I need him. <laughs> no, he ain't. No, he ain't. I'm not, you don't speak down or and waiting for your friends to fall and for those people to fall. You don't even want nothing that way. Look, look, even the story of David and Saul, even though God had took the kingship from Saul, David was like, I don't want that. I don't want that. David didn't even want to take it from God. He was like, no, I don't want to hurt Saul. I don't want to take it. Let me tell you something. You don't want to take something even when God has given it to you. Yo, that means your heart is in the right posture. Hear this woman go, okay, Tony, he says, not the time is that. Listen, swallow. listen, let me tell y'all something. This girl is fighting for her baby still to this day. This woman took this girl baby, took this girl baby, fighting her in court, calling her unfit, decided not to address the issue. This girl baby been living with Coral since 2018. So 2019, 20. 21, 22, 23, oh my God, 2024, almost six years. Six years without being with his mama fully. Six years. You move away. You move away. And the girl has no access to where you stay at. And you keep this girl, baby. This situation could have turned out a lot different. A lot different, you know? Yes, Tony. This situation could have turned out a lot different. You know why? Because Cora, if she came back to you, right? And she said that she wanted her baby back. You could have said, listen, let me work with you so that I can still stay active in this boy's life because I have grown attached to him now and I do love him. But let me work with you so that we can both have a mutual relationship with him because I still want him to know his mother. His mother over there raising three other children. Do you hear me? Three other children, and this girl got this girl's baby. That is insane. And you up here preaching, you working administration, you up here praying, and ain't none of that stuff working for Cora Jakes. Now, I'm not blaming that on her daddy. I'm not blaming it on her mama. 
But it shows some mental illness going on over there in her mind, and it needs to be addressed. And that girl need to find a way. Come on. She had the first mother deported. Is that what it was? Listen, I'm not listen, Tony. I, I, I Listen, I'm with you. And there's some crazy stuff going over there with that Jake. I ain't going to say T.D. Jakes, I used to call him grandfather. Go, look, and she says a whole lot be going on behind that, which I can just imagine because they still in the flesh. I can imagine. But some of this stuff I cannot. Like, some of this stuff is just stupid. Like, some other stuff that, hey, you slip and fall into whatever. But this stuff is stupid. And then so she ended up divorcing. Now she's divorced from her from her husband, right? But guess what? After she separated from him, Tony, hold on, I just separated from him. Now he got a case supposed to be so-called pinning against him for sexually assaulting one of her adopted, the adopted girl. Now, we don't know about that. It's an allegation, but let me tell you this. Just even making that allegation against him, then that means that she's destroying his career. She's, listen, let me tell you something. This sound real fishy. This sound like that they had to destroy the ex-husband when he walked away. Because listen, the boy started doing rap music. The boy was starting to be known. All of a sudden, they're going through a separation. Then all of a sudden, after the separation, they're going through a divorce. And then all of a sudden, oh, he allegedly touch her adopted daughter now y'all gotta understand the plot to this wickedness the plot could, could 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 be that they don't want him to open up his mouth they don't want him to say nothing about nothing that's going on so they're trying to discredit the ex-husband y'all better watch this stuff man god is exposing this stuff and i know some of y'all y'all like wait a minute, it's a lot but y'all better get ready y'all better get ready because it's gotta come out it's like it's like vomit it's like vomit. It's been so much stuff that's been in the belly of the enemy. It's been in the belly of hell. But hell got to spit it up. Hell got to spit it up. Do y'all hear me? Hell got to spit this stuff up. And it's got to be exposed and delivered. And solutions and justice has to take place from those who have been treated unjust. Let me tell you this. Those of you who have been treated unjustly, this is your season. This is your time. This is your moment. Do you understand me? This is your moment. Don't let the haters stop you from speaking out. Don't let the haters stop you from talking. Don't let the trolls, don't let the negative folks that's on here try to stop you. Come, They're there to do that. They're there to distract you. Let me tell y'all something in this season. Don't even look at some of the comments. Don't look at some of the comments when you're putting out this stuff because they are trying to be a distraction. They're evil. They're wicked. They don't have spirit of discernment. They don't have a spirit of wisdom. That is crazy. You don't take nobody child from them and say that you are a woman of God. The devil is a liar. Your job and your duty and your responsibility is to make sure that girl get the healing that she need. That she get the healing that she need. That she get in a good position. When you, and then she told the girl one time, she says, look around. Look at my house. Don't you see? He's in a better place. Wait a minute. What about her other three children? What about our other three children? So you're going to take her one child and you tell the mother that it looks like that he's in a better place because of how your house look. But you ain't got no true experience. You don't got no mother instinct. You have never had a baby. You cannot have a baby. So you don't know what it feels like to bring forth a baby, to bring forth a baby and to have a connection with that child even while you're depressed, even while you're on drugs, even while you're on crack. Even while you're going through, you still have a connection. It's, it's something that God gave a mother. It's something that God gave a mother that nobody can take from a mother. And so when you, when you snatch a child, it's hard enough. It's hard enough that women have to give up their children. It's hard enough that they have to give up their children because they say, you know what? I can't take care of them and I've got to give them up so they can be in a better environment. That's hard already. But to take a child from a mother who really wants her child, that's even more devastating. That's even more devastating. So listen, y'all, if y'all follow this story, it gets really, really crazy, y'all. It gets really crazy how they took this girl child. Look, I was taking notes on this stuff. The judge is a member. The judge in the case, which is automatically, automatically a conflict of interest. The judge in the case is actually a member in the potter's house. Listen at this stuff, y'all. God is about to reveal all of this wickedness. Listen, y'all. And on, and on top of that, and on top of that, on top of that, the girl in the, another conflict of interest in this particular situation, another conflict of interest in this particular situation is this, is that the girl, <laughs> let me tell y'all something. Cora told the girl she was going to be her lawyer. Not, not a lawyer. Let me take it back. Scratch that. Cora told the girl that she needed therapy and she needed a counselor. 
So she told the girl, well, let me counsel you. Since you know I work for the church, I work in that department. She said, let me counsel you. So as she was counseling the girl, she was recording everything that the girl was saying on her MacBook. She was recording it and writing it down. And do you know that everything that the girl was confiding her in, confiding in her about her life when she was so-called counseling and, 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 and going to be her therapist, do y'all know that Corwin took that information to the court and used that information against her? Number one, even as a therapist or a counselor, whatever you want to call yourself, that is confidentiality. That is automatic. Cause you can't, you're going to use the information she gave you as a counselor therapist and use that to take her baby, to take the girl baby. And then she's on, on, on line with this boy. Quora, y'all, for the record, for y'all who don't know, because I know a lot of people don't do no research, and that's fine, because that's what we're here to do. We don't bring up nothing unless we've already researched it, we've already checked data and checked facts, and so that's fine. You don't have to go look, but let me tell you something. Y'all know Quora do not have any kids. She don't have any kids. Those kids she has are adopted children. One belongs to Michelle Loud, and the other one belongs to somebody said it on here, to somebody they didn't have deported back. The baby looks like she's Mexican or Hispanic. So we know Mexican and Hispanic is all up in Texas, okay? We know they reside in Texas. They closer to the borders. And stuff. They reside right there in Texas. So whoever baby she got, nobody knows who are the parents of that child. That is sick. That is sick. And when y'all go on to hear the rest of the stories about how she don't eat, she hires people to take care of these kids. She hires people to take care of these kids because she don't know how to change no diapers and she don't know how to really be. She ain't had no kids. She ain't had to go through none of that stuff. And then watch this. She's over. She's over the, the youth ministry, over 3,000 kids. Wait a minute. Do y'all know who is over y'all children when y'all put them in these churches, when y'all put them in these places? Do y'all know who's over your kids? How many kids she was in there plotting on? How many mothers she was in there waiting for their downfall while they was in the ministry? How many kids she was secretly questioning about their life and what you got going on? And are you okay? Are you safe? If anybody, you think you can go to the church and have a safe place? What? I listen, I'm t- this year we found out it's more demons in leadership. It's more demons in leadership in these churches than you've ever could ever imagine. You taking your children, dropping these kids off at some of these churches. Let me tell you something. I tell you, you better go to the church with your child. You better go find out who was a father. The Bible even tells you to know those who labor among you. To know those who labor among you. Listen, y'all. It's enough of just going out here and I'm telling you and just dropping your kids off with somebody. No. No, baby. No, 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 no. Stop dropping your kids off with folks. Stop dropping your kids off. Know them. Know them. Spend some time with them and know them. This girl trusted. This girl trusted Cora Jake. She trusted Cora Jake. Cora, you wrong. Cora, you are dead wrong. Cora Jake, you are wrong. Give that girl back her baby and stop making her use unnecessary money. Stop making her use unnecessary money to fight you for her child. You got a problem. Ain't no listen, y'all. Listen. Listen, we in January. We ain't got the February yet. And the Jakes is off the chain right now. The Jakes name is off the chain right now. But everything done in the dark must make its way to the light. If y'all don't get that girl back her baby, I'm telling you, I, listen, look, Michelle, Michelle, listen, I might go ahead and take a trip down there to Texas and get your baby back. <laughs> listen, because I know what that feels like. I listen, when I had my when I had my daughter. When I had my daughter, not my last one, but the one before that, I was like, I'm not about to bring no baby through here. I can't do it. And I was saved, saved, sanctified. But you know what? I was in a depressed state. You know why? Because I had failed. I had failed. I had slid back into doing things the way that I knew I wasn't supposed to. And here, you know, what you do in the dark, it started making its way out. And my making its way out was that was that stomach, letting people know that I wasn't married and I got this baby in my stomach. And it's an embarrassing moment. So I understand what the girl was saying. You embarrassed. You feel ashamed. I was just like the girl. She says, listen, I had all these kids. And she said, I had, I had dreams of being a dancer, traveling around acting and all this and now I'm having all these kids and I'm like this ain't my life I'm the, I did the same exact thing and the week on the show we do we did, got pregnant with that kid and you like I can't do it how many on here I know anybody gonna say it but they had abortions after abortions after abortions let me tell you something saying I can't do it I'm not gonna have kids let me tell you something I know it's a lot of folks on here that had so many abortions they, they lost count 
Let me tell y'all something. Tell you a secret. I've been there and done that too. I've been there and done that too. And I pray and ask God to forgive me of my sins, baby. Wash me so that I'm white as snow. Cleanse me. But let me tell you something. Every time I turn around when I got pregnant, that thought came back up. I could never handle it. Come on, Sister Nicole. I had an abortion. It makes me sad. I, baby, let me tell you something. I've been there and done that too. I had to tell my children some real true stuff about having abortions. It's real. Do you understand me? It is real. And so at the end of the day, we all go through these moments. I thank God for the ones who did make it through on my side. But I'll always be looking forward to heaven. I'm always looking forward to being able to see my children, whatever the case may be. Listen, we're not going to be ashamed of our past because it's just that it's our past. It's our past. And that's why we can stand here in our truth today and say that we serve a gracious, good God. But what you would not do is take advantage of me about my temporary moment. My temporary moment. A lot of us was born, we was born not with a silver spoon in our mouth. We was not born in good environments. We was not born when we were cultured and we were taught the true principles of God. We was not born and we were not taught how to do things godly ways. Listen, every time I got pregnant, I had a friend, come on, here's the abortion money, let's go, here's the... Abortions in the ghetto was birth control. Let's be clear. So you ain't going to die nobody because you stayed in the mansion and because you didn't have to experience the stuff the ghetto folks had to experience. But baby, abortions was birth control in the ghetto. Okay? That was the way. Don't worry about it. You don't take no pills. You just go right down there. It got so bad that you can go to the back of an alley and let a dude do it for food stamps. Come on, y'all. This thing was, this is why they fight for the rights now. And I get it now. It is a life. But in your, in your first stages, we were told it wasn't a life. That it was just a blood clot. It wasn't even it wasn't even formed yet. We were told that it wasn't a life. So it made us feel like these things were easier to do because it hadn't become a baby yet. It hadn't really grown yet. It's still a blood clot. You can't see it. And so this is how we were persuaded that it wasn't going to be nothing. It was just birth control. It's easy. You're going to get in and you're going to get right out. You're going to pop a pill. They're going to put you to sleep and they're going to zoom, zoom. And you're going to be out recovering in the room and you're good to go. And then people do it over and over and over again. Tell your own truth. So don't. Come on. That's right, Trace. I tell my own truth, baby. You can't talk about Michelle. Trigger preacher going to tell you anyway, baby. Because what you going to do with my story? What you going to do? You can blast it. You just bring some promotion over here. But it's my story. It's my story. This how I got on this side. I'm good. Thank God. You know, because my story can be totally different. You know how many people are sitting around here with cervical cancer? Cervical cancer because of abortion. Cervical cancer because of abortion after abortion. They got some. Check your cervix. Check your cervix. I had a doctor tell me when I was 20, 21 that they saw something on my cervix. Well, baby, I thank God I, I got into God real quick. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If I would have listened to them doctors, they would have did a hysterectomy on me and I wouldn't have had the last four kids I had. So guess what? If it was something there, I ignored it. And I had four kids. Now you can bring it on when I'm 70 years old, 80 years old. When I get ready to check up out of here, y'all can go look and bring it on if you want to. But God is a keeper of my soul and God is a keeper of your soul. So getting back to the point is this. If I discuss with you my traumas, and this is to the young girls, to the young girls. Now you're young. Teach your young girls to be careful about their friends. Teach your young daughters, your cousins, your teach your nieces, teach your, even your nephews, teach them how to be careful. Teach them how to be careful with those who are sticking close to them, but secretly desiring their life and secretly wants their life. you got to be really careful. This girl was number 23 years old, y'all. Can't go back to 23, some of y'all who not there. Go back to 23. Go back to 23 and, 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 and see the difference. That's 20 years ago for me. That's 20 years ago for me. Girl, 23-year-old trigger preacher, Michelle, is not who I am today. If you judge me by 23-year-old, you will swear you got a different individual. You'll be like, they, they different. You ain't lying. They real different. I'm more mature. I've got more wisdom. I have more experiences. And just your body automatically just make you grow up and make better decisions for some. For some. Some of us, unfortunately, that don't got God, they still locked into that 23-year-old. And they 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. But they still locked into that 20-some-year-old mindset. Because they wouldn't let God come in here and transform their mind. The Bible says, be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. If they ain't putting nothing different in their mind, ain't nothing going to change. They putting the same stuff year after year after year. But no, Michelle started putting this word in her. Michelle started putting this word in her. I wanted to transform. And keeps putting that word in her. And keeps putting that word in her. At the end of the day, Cora Jakes is absolutely wrong. She brainwashed this girl. She tried to brainwash this girl. She caught her at a vulnerable moment at 23 years old. She caught her at a vulnerable moment, having three kids, thinking that she was her friend. 
I, my friend, I want my friend to help me take care of these kids too. <laughs> I struggled with my last five kids right before I got married. A couple years before I got married, I struggled. A couple years before I got married, I was struggling so bad, but I struggled with every last one of my kids because you know what I said. I know what it felt like to not be raised with my siblings because I wasn't raised with my siblings. I had three siblings. I had three siblings. And let me tell you something. We were all split up at different times. Sometimes we were together. Sometimes we were split up. And my auntie did a lot of raising me. My mother had to work. And I got it back then. Your, your aunties would step in. Your grandmothers would step in. And the grandmothers was really grandmothers back then. So I get it. I get it. And so my auntie had to raise me because my mother had to work. And my daddy was mentally messed up himself on drugs. And he was trying to figure life out. He had just recovered from a coma and all of that stuff. And he just wasn't right. So he couldn't really do it. But my auntie, I, God rest her soul, my auntie, she stood up to the plate. She stood up to the plate and she raised me, okay? And so, but my auntie knew at some point that I was going to want my mother. She knew at some point that, that I was going to go back and that I was not hers. And guess what? I did. Every chance I got, I wanted to go back home to my mother. I wanted to go stay with my mother. I wanted to go be with my mother. And I finally got a chance to go be with my mother at the age of around about 14 years of age. But my auntie didn't try to take me from my mother. My auntie didn't try to take me. She didn't take her. Uh, she didn't, She could have said, I raised her all my life. I raised her. She could have said, because I remember sleeping in the bed with my auntie. I remember my auntie washing me up. I remember my auntie doing my hair. I remember my auntie being there. I remember that. But my auntie did not try to take me from my mother. She knew that ultimately... She was doing a favor for my mother, and she knew that she had got attached to us. But what she did not know is that I would truly love her for the rest of my life. That if you ask me anything about my mother, I will tell you in a minute, my mother is my mother. But I'll also tell you, that's my mother. That, that woman that's in the grave, that woman that's in the grave, let me tell you something. She couldn't do no wrong. And even though she was crazy, she was a fighter, she was crazy, she couldn't do no wrong. But you know, she did her part. She did her part. She stepped in and she raised me to the best of her ability, but she never tried to take me from my mother. Listen, my grandmother now was there as much as they could be, and that whole family on my daddy's side, they came through, and they tried to help raise this old crazy child that my daddy, you know what I'm saying, didn't help with his seed give birth to, okay? But let me tell you something. None of them tried to take us from our mother because that was not the goal. The goal was to help each other out. The goal was to have a community of help. A community of support, not to try to take something from each other. Listen, if I'm down or you're down, listen, I don't care if I help you do something to help you do something or whatever. Listen, it's not for me to try to take anything from you. Now, there are some times in my life I have helped people do some things and I let them have it. There are some times in my life that I partner with people and they try to take it all. Now, we ain't going to have that. It's a difference. When you partner with somebody on something and they try to take it all from you, that's selfish. That's selfishness. That's selfishness. You got to understand something. I'm telling y'all in these last and evil days, watch who call you, call, you know, say they're your friend, say they're your brother, say they're your, and they got arterial motives. Cora Jakes is absolutely wrong. Listen, y'all, let's help continue to pray for Michelle. And she got some, go over to her page, help with, with lawyer causes and just help and see it into that. Because one day, listen, one day, one day it can be us. One day it can be you. One day it can be anybody. Help give her, give her. To help invest in what she needs. Because let me tell you something. That's wrong. That girl there crying. That girl ain't even yet. Probably. Shoot. That girl probably about 30, 31 years old. And the siblings is asking for their brother. They're asking, where's my brother at? I mean, she called the baby her healing child. She called the baby her healing child. Cora over there. Cora high. Cora was still high, y'all. The girl said she smoked more weed than anybody. I believe it. She over there high. She high and crazy. She had the Cora Jakes. Give that. I don't care how much you try to ignore it. I don't care how much you're trying to act like you're not bothered by it. You cannot be over there sitting there with that girl's son taking pictures and calling that boy your son. That is just crazy, y'all. That is, listen, if the Potter House ain't already rocked already by all the other stuff, Cora, you show help and rock this thing. Because it did not have to go that far. Get Stop trying to take people's kids, y'all. Listen, it's enough kids out here. Willie Moore Jr. speaks about it. He was an adopted child. Listen, there's a lot of facilities out here that have kids that needs a home. Go do it right. 
Go do it right. Go to these places where, where the kids that really need you really don't have nobody. Orphanage, kids that are out here in other countries and everything. Listen, go and do it right and get these kids who have been neglected, who have been rejected, who have been thrown out there. Go get those kids. Stop trying to take people's kids. Stop it. And for some people that's trying to have babies, listen, y'all, I need y'all to be okay. I know I don't know what it feels because, baby, I got enough of them. And if you would have came at the right time, baby, you could have been God mama all day long. But the truth of the matter of it is that if you don't have kids right now, God is, is, is sparing your womb for something greater. Something greater that you may can't see right now. See, let me tell you something. Some people, you don't have kids because God is going to need you to mother some other folks that he needs you to spend all of that attention and energy to. Listen, if, 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 if a lot of us, if a lot of us, if everybody had kids and people threw their kids out there, then you wouldn't have a time or a moment to go get somebody else's kids. So some, he have to allow you not to be able to have your own because he wants you to go out there and get those who have been rejected and be a mother to them. Be a mother to the motherless. And some, he got greater assignments for that guess what? If he had given you a child, you wouldn't be able to fully dedicate to an assignment just like a marriage because you'll be dedicated to taking care of that child. Look at Oprah Winfrey. It was a reason why. It was a reason why. Because she had to dedicate to whatever she had to do full time and she probably couldn't get attention to the kid. Some of us got to understand the reason why we do not have the things that we want is because God understands what we need for the assignment and the gift and the calling that he has put in us. That's so important. But when you look at other people's lives and you covet after other people's stuff, then you start desiring something that God never intended for you to have. That's why the Bible says a part of the Ten Commandments is do not covet your neighbor's stuff. Stop covering people. If you do not have it, trust me, you do not need it. If you do not have it, trust me, I promise you, you don't need it at this moment of your life. You don't need it. Stop taking people's stuff and trying to justify why you took it. Stop trying to get people to, 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 to you know, set them up and, and pull everything out of them and get everything you want from them just to let them go. No, 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 no. Not 2024. So listen, y'all. Y'all help me spread this. Share this video and say, Cora Jakes, give Michelle Loud back her child. Because I'm praying to God that that's what she does, is that she give that woman back her child. And I'm not going to play any music because I need this to go around with no interruptions whatsoever. Thank y'all. Share this video. Put Michelle Loud down there. Put Michelle Loud. Put Michelle Loud. Listen, I got an interview that's coming up, y'all. I got an interview that's coming up next Thursday. Um, I'm going to drop that information, but I got an interview with somebody. When I drop when I drop the flyer, y'all going to realize who it is. But I got a real powerful interview that is coming up. Thank you for sharing, Drusilla. Thank you for sharing, Connie. Thank you. Uh, sister, you are talking so right. God needs some of us. Bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I thank you all. Remember always, y'all can go to fashionbygodsgirls.com and y'all can go ahead and support right there by actually getting some of the Fashion by God's Girls actual apparel. Y'all can get the heads, y'all can get all that good stuff or whatever, and y'all can help me represent who we are, but most importantly, whose we are. But y'all make sure y'all share this and put Michelle Loud, Cora J's, give Michelle Loud back her child. That's what we're here to do as a community, y'all. That's what we're here to do. We ain't got to go on the streets no more. We can go right, look, no justice, no peace is right here on these platforms right now. I'm telling y'all, God is doing something mighty now. We ain't got to go out on the streets and risk polices trying to spray us with mace and trying to spray us with water and stop us from being together. No, we can come right together on these social media platforms and we can make some noise. We can make some noise. Y'all go out there and y'all tell that Cora Jakes to give Michelle loud back her child.